Hi, I'm Wayne Tuttle, and welcome to Chasing Legends. Welcome back to Chasing Legends. Please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. Check us out at www.legendsofsuperstitionmountains.com and our website for all the cool swag, whatever else you might want. Coffee cups, t-shirts, hats. Uh, leave comments. We like comments. Sometimes there's something to reply to. We always check the comments. We always like them. So that being said and done, let's get into this week's. Uh, Chasing Legends. Now, we could just sit here and I could read from a book or talk about it without telling you what book. Yeah, I could have done that, but, you know, let's not do that, all right? But I will say this before we get this week. We're, we're indebted because the resource for a lot of this is um, Tom Collinborn's Chronicles, um, as well as the Lost Dutchman Mine <clears throat> website, um, the original one from back around 2000, 2001. They did have a lot of this stuff available. I believe it's still available there. And a lot of this came from Tom Collinborn's personal collection. He actually kind of redrew them. So they're not most of the time the original map, but he did sketches of them. And then they were part of his collection. They're all in a big collection of maps, of copies of maps in the Lost Dutchman um, Historical Society's archives and the Greg Davis collection. So what we're going to get started with today is we're going to look at maps. And our first map is kind of a puzzling map because it's kind of in gibberish and all. It's called the Celeste Jones map. Um, not quite sure why it's called the Celeste Jones map. Um, there's nothing about this that reminds me of Celeste Jones. It looks like someone got very creative and doodled and kind of like made up a thing. I, I would say associated with the whole cipher and everything else kind of like gibberish with it and all. Looking at it, I would say I'm going to guess about 85% of a chance that Bob Ward drew this at some point because that's what it reminds me of. The Celeste Jones map, if you're chasing after the Lost Dutchman mine, no, don't do that, okay? Don't do that. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. So if you get that one, this is the Bark and Ely map. Now, it should explain that this is not a really good Lost Dutchman map because it would have been drawn by Jim Bark and Sims Ely. You will notice a number of maps almost replicate the same map. This is much like more focused in. It kind of plays a little off the fish map, maybe a little at all. I don't know where it really came from. I didn't see it anywhere. But um, if Jim Bark and Sims Ely were following this, then they were in Fish Creek right by Horses, Horse Mesa and by Black Cross Butte, okay. But it kind of reminds you a little bit of some of the Gonzales maps and different things like that. And if you're taking this and this is in your pack and this is how you're gonna find the Lost Dutchman mine because there's these this stuff here, the pinnacle and, and the mine here in this tribute. No, okay, let's just, let's just move along. Then we have this interesting bit. Um, this is Das Lucas's map. Now, Das Lucas was a very interesting character because Das Lucas showed up on the scene and he claimed to have found Walt's mine and he found a Bible and some glasses, broken glasses, and a tin type of Jacob Waltz that said Jacob Waltz on the back. And he sold this and we have some of those objects today. And then he wrote this huge manuscript. Das Lucas, that was not his name. He was French Canadian. He also liked to sell drugs and got in trouble with a lot of the law a lot. Um, the Das Lucas map, if you ever read Das Lucas's manuscript, he writes this way and he writes this way in it. He, it was like he was trying to save paper as he wrote. Let's not. So the Das Lucas map, there's nothing there, even possibly, even relatively interesting. Now the next map is interesting because most of you are going to have heard of it. It is called the Dick Holmes map and you're going to go, ooh. Dick Holmes map. Now, a newspaper writer claimed that Dick Holmes gave this to him, I think in the 1920s, 1930s, before he died. Um, the problem, one of the problems associated with it is no one's ever seen any case of this ever before. And additionally, Brownie Holmes said he didn't, his dad didn't have this map. He knew nothing of it. And it seems irrelevant. It, it's kind of neat. It has miner's needle, <laughs> needle, weaver's needle, kind of 
three red hills, the four peaks, and a little X in there. Yeah. If that's what you're basing your search on, it should be pretty easy. And But I would say... This one's interesting. From It's actually from a book. Um, people have come up to me with this uh, map. This was actually in Glenn McGill and Kurt Gentry's book, Killer Mountains. And this is Glenn McGill's map of like where he placed things and all. It's actually a pretty cool map. If you're going out in the mountains out by Bluff Springs and all that and looking at it and kind of following the story in the Killer Mountains all, this is a cool map. But it's a map that was made sometime in the 1960s by Glenn McGill for the book killer mountains has nothing in it other than just kind of information and stuff attributed to glenn mcgill i'm not going to tear it up he you know good book and he did a nice job and stuff like that so it's kind of handy it's kind of in there um this map another one it's another julia thomas map julia thomas made a lot of maps for a person that there is absolutely no authentic julia thomas map in existence but this is that one interesting one where the Salt River appears to be on the wrong side. And then some people say that's Queen Creek. And it has the horse's head and a bunch of cactuses around it. Got it. Remind me a little something Al Morrow would have done. But um, I don't know who did these. The original one of Julia Thomas was actually drawn up by Oren Arnold. It was for his book, Superstition Gold, which was published by the Dons. And I mentioned before about that. And actually, Oren Arnold wrote under it something to the effect of, this is a facsimile of what possibly a Julia Thomas map would have been made of. Unfortunately, everybody and their brother decided to copy those maps and pretend and fake Julia Thomas maps. The problem here is he said that this is not a Julia Thomas map. This is what one could have possibly looked like. No one's ever come forward and had a Julia Thomas map. Anything that looks remotely like this or any of the Julia Thomas maps you've seen, including Travis Tomlinson's version, um, no, it's not a real map. Julia Thomas did not sell those maps. If she sold maps, they were nothing like that. This is the Gonzalez Mexican Mine map. We used it in Legends to some degree. Um, it lines up Weaver's Needle with the four peaks, and there was a, we actually found a cactus that actually had a blaze and with a pile of stones. And if you watch Legend of the Superstition Mountains, they were standing there with shoes. It was very, very cool. Now this looks like the area of Fish Creek kind of running through and how it works through and however you want to look at it. But that is where this approximately sits. That actual site actually exists. Bob Schuess had found it. He thought it lined up with this map very well. It's a very cool thing. Um, how authentic, I don't know where the original came from and the original idea for all this. But we used this in the show, and it was interesting. There was an actual spot that perfectly lined up with all this. I won't tear it up. It was just cool. Now, mentioning Bob's shoes, this was a map that was very interesting. Backstory is, um, I, I, think, I don't know if any province was in it, but Hang de Andrea, um, I, I, Ernie Saviano, there's a bunch of guys. A bunch of guys come from Chicago, and they have found some folded up map in the binding in a book. And they had no idea what it had to do with. They got hooked up with um, John Burbridge and Barry Storm at different points and all. Um, Bob Schuess ended up with this map. The original does still exist. Bob has it. Um, and he pretty much solved most of it. And it's a very, very kind of interesting map. There is one spot that has a thatched mine. Bob was able to place these mines and find a number of them in the area they're at. I believe it's up around Hackberry Butte. And he was able to place them, and it actually fits to a T. It's very, very cool. It lends the map a possibility of authenticity. Um, we've never been, I, I don't know if he'd ever want to do the sampling for a date to carbon date that map. But it's very cool, but he did find everything but the thatched mine. He never found the covered mine. And that would be very cool to find. But yeah, he did find all the rest of them. If you ever pick up a copy in this map, I won't tear up because Bob is my friend. If you ever find a copy of um, Thunder God's Gold, the Bob Shoes edited edition at the back, there is the story of this map and the map. And it shows a picture of one of the mines they found and, and all that. So it's a very cool backstory to all that. This one is basically the Frank Fish map. Um, I know everybody calls it by different names. People always give it these different names. It was the Frank Fish map. Um, this map came into existence. Frank Fish went to Erwin Ruth, Adolf Ruth's son. He wanted to find know if he had the maps for um, Adolf Ruth after Adolf Ruth had died. Um, Erwin didn't, and he was talking to Gonzalez, but then he had mentioned it's the Peralta family. 
Well, Frank Fish did a lot of treasure hunting down in Mexico, so he started going to these small towns and villages and stuff and talking to anyone who was relation with the Peraltas. One family had a map in their house. He got that map from them, the original. Still, we have that original still. Um, but the family told him there was another member of the family had the other part of the map. There's two parts to this. Frank Fish could not find the rest of the Peralta family. The family did not know what happened to those descendants. He never figured he had enough information to really put much of a search in for it. He kept it hidden away, even though his um, museum was broken into a number of times. He did hide this map. Before he died, he gave it to Erie Schaefer, told her maybe you'll have better luck or find the other part of the map. Someday it'll turn up. She passed it on to Al Reeser. Al Reeser passed it on to Greg Davis. And a lot of people, there's a lot of pictures of this, and we used it unexplained, unexplored. I've always wanted it carbon dated. Um, because I'd like to see what the earliest age date, because it is possibly one, the Schuess map earlier. This is one that we know where the original is. The one you'll see occasionally has the names written down on the side of it and stuff. That was from Linda Peralta. What happened is Frank Peralta, I think I believe it was her uncle or father, he was involved with um, John Burbridge and Erie Schaefer on the thing called Legends, the Legends Hunt for the Superstition or the Lost Dutchman Mine. They wrote all their names on the side and all made copies of the map. Um, she had Frank Peralta's original copy of that, and we have that too. So, very cool map. I'm not going to tear it up. Um, I always like gazing upon it and wondering what if. This is the Phoenix Dons Club map. Um, this was the Dons, probably tongue-in-cheek sense of humor, something they would use in the books and stuff. And pamphlets and stuff that they started when they started doing treks and going into the Superstition Mountains in the 30s. And then continuing and even today they have Discovery Camp and we have the Rendezvous which is attached. But this was the Don's map that was located in their information and stuff about, you know, people going up into the mountains. It does say the Lost Dutchman Mines over here by a Palo Verde tree. I don't know. I won't tear it up. I'm a Don and I probably would get kicked out for tearing up Don's property or something. Um... This is called the Peralta Storm Deer Skin Map. This one's very odd because it has stuff on it that couldn't be on the map. But, uh, and I don't know, it's why it's the Peralto and uh, this and that. But Barry Storm did a lot of kind of sketchy, shady stuff. It has the RP Cactus kind of written in there with an arrow and stuff. So it's kind of a mixture. I don't know if it really was a map. It, it always makes me feel like this map was a possible map and then basically Barry Storm got a hold of it and wrote a bunch of stuff in on it and stuff because what happens with a lot of Dutch hunters is they have a tendency of well I think this is real but what they left out well great thanks for adding to the map so I would say no don't, don't be chasing that map this map is very interesting um This is a map of Coffee Flat Mountain showing you a mine and all this stuff. It is basically Abe Reed's camp with his mine and Reed's water. Um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know why it's in there with... It's from the old prospector, which probably was Abe Reed, but it was basically shows you where to go to Reed Springs, to Reed's camp over to by Abe Reed's digging. So I, I don't think that's going to help you find the Lost Dutchman, even though there is someone actually in that area searching presently and all that. This is the infamous profile map, the, or the profile map. And it can be this way, it can be the other way. I've seen one of the leather early versions of it. None of this is on there. It really just has a couple bumps over here and this kind of what looks like a peak over here. It doesn't even look like this. Um, most of the versions of this you see have been copied and changed. The one they always say that Adolf Ruth had was a far more modern version than any of the early versions I've ever seen. The earliest versions don't even don't have all this extra stuff and all you know whatever's on there. I I was a huge believer in this map most of my life, and then Aunt Randy Wright did a lot of work on tracking this map down. And kind of going through it and the sad thing is I, I don't think the whole thing's lost but he did it in um, a Lost Dutchman forum and everybody poo-pooed it and Randy did really amazing work to take someone that this was my go-to map and then I looked at Randy's research and realized wow I just wasted all my time 
Um, but Randy did a fantastic job. I know he catches these occasionally. He should be proud of himself because he did work. But he didn't get any credit. Everybody just gave him kind of like the stink eye over the whole thing. And that happens with these situations. But um, it wasn't... It, it wasn't... It wasn't right because he did good work. He did good enough work that it convinced me. The old Spanish diggings map. Um, usually when I see the zigzag lines and all this weird stuff and all... I mean, how who draws mountains like this? I mean, if this is your treasure map and you're saying go buy this thing, the Weaver's Needle looks nothing like that. There's nothing in the mountains that looks like that. I don't know what that even possibly is. But it's just first water, second water, the the, the twin buttes and stuff like that. Then you got to find the sun goes over this cactus that goes down and shows you this mine in this little butte. I don't even know where that comes from. Um, it's funny because there's so many maps and you look at all these and then you're like, huh? Um, this one here, Robert Simpson Jacobs map. Crazy Jake, the con man. Yep, he went to prison for conning people out of millions of dollars. And the chances are that this is an accurate map that led to anything of value other than maybe he got people to give him money. He has this little heart in here and stuff and, you know, he has little trails. It, 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 it does follow trails and some things in the mountains. Um, leading to treasure, Crazy Jake giving you, selling you, or possibly leaving a map for us all to find treasure. Yeah, I don't think so. Sorry, Jake, you know, but hey, he's probably laughing. This is the Blacktop Mesa. Um, this, this, this was the Harnish map, I think the operations. Um, it's, it's, it was an actual diggings. It's not a lost Dutchman map. This is just basically as a historical record of what they were doing, what they were looking for up there. And we've talked a little about some of the, the comings and goings on this map. It's an interesting map to look at. And it's oriented up on Blacktop Mesa. And it shows you some of the particular areas you might want to explore up there. But And it tells you where the markings are and stuff. And down in here is um, Caballo's camp, Chuck Ehler's camp and all that. But um, it's not a Lost Dutchman map. So, you know, and I haven't had many people go with that map. I'll leave it be. Because it's, it, it's not trying to be. I, I hate it when it's something purports itself to be something else. Than it is Charles Clark. Charles Clark, we heard earlier. Charles Clark is the man that told us Dick Holmes gave me a map called the Dick Holmes map. Here's Charles Clark's next map because he has this map. And I'm not even right. Charles Clark did a lot. Um, he took possible historical pieces and stuff and then he wrote articles and he didn't do a good job of verifying or just trying to tell a story and make a popular story. He's caused problems for a lot of Dutch hunters not to trust certain information because of things he did and things he later said. Um, I'm going to say just because of kind of what happened with him and whenever you make things muddier or more difficult for everyone, you get torn up. Um, not enough that Bark, Jim Bark and Sim Zeely had a map. Jim Bark had his own map. It's the same map. Has the two pinnacles and has this up. But now it's Superstition Mountains here, Rio Salado. Now it's deeper in the superstitions. So it's kind of cool. Um, did Jim Bark draw this? I've been through so many letters and so much information and everything. And it says 1892, which means it was within a year of Walt's dying. So how did he draw this? This is before him and Sim Zeeler are really even searching. It's kind of neat. It gives you the four peaks up there. Yeah, Jim Bark, I, if he drew this map, it was he was drawing something out. But why would he draw a map of where the mine is when he was searching for the mine and then give it to people publicly? Oh, here we go again. It's Julia Thomas again with the same map. It has the little horsey head in it. That's always cute that there was a horse head. And it got all that stuff going. And then it has the little pines and all this stuff. And then the spring and has the river on the top. And then you go this way and that way and all this stuff. And this is pretty close to the one that Orrin Arnold drew that everybody copies and does variations on. Um, it's kind of funny because if you took this and tried to overlay it and pick some of the spots, most of them are areas Julia Thomas never even traveled to. Julia Thomas drew maps for people. We don't have a single copy of anything that ever, anyone ever had. I've always doubted that story. I always took the story of Julia Thomas selling maps and all that. And there will be people that will try to argue with that. I take that as the home side and certain people trying to defame Julia Thomas because they knew Julia Thomas knew what she was talking about and Reinhardt Petrash, they did everything possible. Oh, he's a drunk. She's a crazy lady. She's psychotic. She's this. 
Yet Sims Ely's and everyone that spoke to her seemed to get nothing dramatic out of her. She was very matter-of-fact up in, before she died. And Sims Ely talked to her at the end after he'd been interviewed her several times and said she, she was in very, very bad health, she, but she was a very nice lady. But I think on the other side of things, one of the problems I have is there were so many people that you didn't really have the best information. You were searching coming up empty, and so you decided to trash the reputation and character of these other people. And yes, she was in part of a Christian kind of apocalyptic thing and all of this stuff. But some of the, you know, the whole thing of her selling thousands of maps for hundreds of dollars and all, it, it's absolute garbage. Um... This one here, I'm not even sure what to make of this map. Um, this this map says like Spanish Macers. I don't even know what's going on with it. Um, Montana, they got, yeah, one of the things you have to hate with all these maps is when white guys take and draw maps with remedial Spanish. Let's just say that. Um, I don't know why, and then they always have these really nice little lines and stuff, you know, and again, we got the little mountain peak, it's cute and all that. Um, if you were drawing a treasure map and you were saying, hey, son, I need you to go find this, here's your information, mm, there's no, no, there's nothing there to really tell you to where to start, start here, it, it's, the, give me a break. Nobody trusts treasure maps like that. They don't encode, they don't encrypt stuff. By the way, everybody's going to go be waiting for me to smash the stone maps. Um, those don't even, they're not even real treasure maps. And, and Tom Lissom made it. We did two-parter or something, or a three-parter on that. At this point, there's no reason to even revisit that. Um, I'm not revisiting the peg leg Tomlinson stuff and all that stuff. It's just gotten so far beyond. I realize some people will totally believe in absolute bullshit. Crazy Jake proved that. Chuck Crawford proved that. And for all the people that hate guys like those, but they buy into other some bullshit... Nice, you know. Um, this is Don Pedro Peralta's map. It's the Ortiz map. This map's interesting because Ortiz said he'd seen the map as a boy and he had to draw it because he only saw it from on the other side of the desk in reverse and he drew it. The only problem with the map, and I won't rip it up, is it gives you absolutely no idea <laughs> indication where anything is. We don't know if these are washes, what they are, but it just gives you dots and stuff all over the place. And he tried to do it. But there is so little information on this to give you any type of orientation or anything. He just saw a map that someone showed someone and stood there and then later tried to replicate it. And um, it possibly was a pretty cool map. It might have been something really good and interesting. There's nothing really there to even go by. If, if you're finding something on that map, you're matrixing it into something. Um, this map is... Not very interesting, but hey, you know what? It, it's all it, it's cool, and I included it because it has the houses and stuff with the smoke coming out of the the house. Because when you're making a treasure map, you should always do these sort of things. There's the Salt River, and then there's an arrow to Phoenix, even so you know where Phoenix is if you're in the mountains. And then Weaver's Needle is giant compared to everything, and the Lost Dutch and Gold Mine is right here between this cactus. And it looks like this dead tree here. So, you know, just go in, go into this trail here, go to Weaver's Needle, then go around the side and find the dead tree and the cactus. And it's right there in the middle. And it's a dead Palo Verde tree, so you shouldn't have a problem 100 years later. Um, I don't know. This is Lester David and Irwin Lewis's. And this was in some magazine. And I think someone made something up. And that, unfortunately, that's probably what 95% of these maps are. Is someone just made something up and was musing and people will follow. How many people have died following something absolutely not true? This is Joe Mays' map. This is interesting because we've done and we've talked about that Joe Mays and the Crystal Skull in the Superstition Mountains. Um, this is the map. I think Tom might have drawn this just showing you where the whole Joe Mays thing was. Joe Mays came in and said he found a crystal skull. It was in a crack yeah, back in this cave. They couldn't get into it. He had several expeditions. I think he used some money from some unsavory people and owed them money. I don't know whatever happened to it or Joe Mays, but there was someone involved with this that later talked to me about a lot of details in it, but placed it in a different spot. So I don't know what was going on. This was in the LaBarge box, I believe. 
but it was a crystal skull and i was very intrigued because they said you can see it in there i'm not and the guy told me he said i don't know if it ever was a skull and one of the things we discussed if it could have been an old lantern that had been sat down and you were seeing the glass in it but um i'll leave it because it's not a gloss dutch mat it leads to no treasure that i know of but supposedly leads to a crystal skull it was probably the least favorite of all the indiana jones mo movies at this point but let's give them props, man. If you go out there, you might find the crystal skull in the superstitions. Who knows? It, it's out there. And it's, the guy was supposed to meet me and actually sit down and have lunch and show me on the maps. And we were supposed to work it all out. If his health would allow him, he would go in with us. And then I think the story was he got shingles and then it got delayed. And I've never heard from him again. I was willing to literally put him on a cart to show me the site at least. And uh, nothing, none of that happened. This is the Laminas de la Sombrero map. Is anyone buying into this map? Yeah, the Peralta sat down and decided, you know, they did it really cool with the towers and the waterfalls and the cliffs and, you know, and this whole thing and that and then the cactus. And there you hey, you got that, you got that dead Palo Verde with the cactus again and you have to go through this archway. We know where that archway is, Trevor. We actually do know where there's an archway thing. I don't think you have to go through it. And then it has Weaver's Needle, and then on the top there's um, an X on it and stuff. And it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know who drew this. I This is one of those ones that gets too... <laughs> they didn't draw little houses with smoke coming out of them, though. That's kind of sad, isn't it? Okay, don't worry. We're almost to the end, right? Blacktop Mesa, the keel map. And it shows Palomino Mountain, and it shows Blacktop Mesa, and it shows all this stuff. And it's obviously someone's rendering of what they thought where it could be and where their search area was. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with the Lost Dutchman. I know people are getting disappointed because there's so many maps. But a lot of guys would sit around and camp and sketch out and come up with ideas and where they're searching and, well, what are the clues? And someone would draw. And Al Moro did it. He had his map with the little guys with the maracas. And, you know, then people would take it. This has a nice cross, big black cross where, you know, everything is and all that. And uh, But it's kind of it's it's kind of neat. It tells you to go to, how to go to Fremont. And it tells you where this cave is and all this stuff. And, uh, all right. And here we go. Drum roll, please. This one is fancy. It has all kinds of stuff all over it. I don't even know what to think of it. It has Weaver's Needle way up here and all kinds of stuff here. And it's just got all kinds of cool stuff. And it goes down here and there's stuff that says UFOs on it. I mean, come on. When the treasure map tells you there's UFOs, tells you where the stone map stuff and there's Queen Creek. And you go back in the mountains here. I mean, this is so cool. We're not going to tear it up because this is so absolute bullshit and ridiculous. It needs to be savored. I mean, we need to preserve this map. And I, I don't know. I'd like to know who the guy was that originally drew this up. Because it is absolutely... It has mileage to the dirt roads. Tells you how to get in each place and go everywhere where all the UFOs were and stuff. I don't know. It could have been Chuck Crawford, Emery Taylor, any one of those guys. I don't know what book it came out of. It sits here and it says often... And it just tells you symbols and all. It has a number on it. Ten. It had to come out of a book or something someone drew up. But there you go. There's our final one. It, it not only tells you where the stone maps were found and treasure, it tells you where the UFOs are in the mountains, which I thought was interesting because I looked at where all the UFOs are sighted all the time and the aliens and stuff, and I've never seen any out there, so I don't even know what's going on. We won't rip it up because it's like, you know, hey, I'm sure there's some guy running around with this thing in his pocket looking in the sky. So there you go. I know there's some I left out, and, and we will catch those again later. Um, there was like the Walker Whedon map and, and, and it kind of replicates some of the Adolf Roof maps. And we'll talk a little about that because it was interesting that Sims Ely, or not Sims Ely, um, Sims Ely's, not Sims Ely, um, Erwin Ruth. Yeah. Erwin Ruth said his father, after his father had died, Sims Ely had sent him that copy of that map. So a lot of times these maps come in and then people go, well, Erwin Ruth had this map and this must have been what Adolf had. But what happened was after Adolf died and they were trying to, they were trying to share and do things with Erwin who had no clue. Um, I, there's, still a, there's letters where he says, I have no idea what maps my dad have. I never really looked at them. I wasn't interested. I took them home. I gave them to him. He had me come in. We looked at them. 
He said, I don't remember what was really on them. I couldn't tell you, identify the maps if they were there, probably. But these guys, Jim Bark, Sim Zeely, anybody and their brother would come out and show him maps and give him copies. And Irwin liked the attention and he liked the mystery and everything of it, so he collected more. So he collected maps after his dad had was gone and he got rid of some of his dad's collection. So there you go. Hope everybody found that fun and informative. I hope you're enjoying the current episodes as well as we're going twisting and working our way around. But I wanted to do something with maps. I wanted to kind of like, kind of go through a little tongue in cheek, a little humor, a little fun. Um, but people are always calling me and saying, well, this map, that map. And one of the things I'd like to do is put something together someday. It would be nice to have a standardized name for maps, like, you know, the alpha map, the beta two map because people say oh you know the Peralto map and then they'll give me like a different map every time <sighs> so whenever I just now some people will be able to see this and say oh that's what he calls the Frank Fish map and I call it that because Frank Fish went down got it from the Peraltas and he brought it back up and it was in his possession for so long and then it came from him and he wrote the story about it and all that so I always attribute it to Frank Fish um, I think it's the best way. There is a book called Who Killed Frank Fish talking about it, and Frank Fish even wrote a book um, about treasure hunting and so forth. You can find some information. If you find the book Who Killed Frank Fish, that's an interesting, interesting book about what happened with Frank Fish and when he died and stuff. And there's a lot of follow-up stuff on that. That's pr Maybe one day we'll do a really dig deep into the Frank Fish story because it is interesting. But in between now and then, and for right now, we're wrapping it up. And I want to say thank you for watching all our stuff every Monday and Fridays. And we will continue in through this spring. I hope everybody's relaxing because the summer start is here. It's starting to get hot. All right. Thank you for joining us today. And always remember, I'm Wayne Tuttle. You're not. And this is Chasing Legends.